Welcome back for part two of the right way to choose a CNC machine. Welcome to CNC with Jamie. Jamie, are you ready to finish our The Right Way to Choose a CNC Machine video? Yes, but we need to talk. What's up? That last video was super boring. Why are we making boring videos? Oof. Have a seat. <laughs> I know it was boring, I admit it. The thing is, it was boring because it was homework. Wait, what? What'd you say? You needed to do your homework to see what companies were really helping their customers to succeed, and what kind of experience people are having with their CNC machines. Okay, but how can we make it less boring? <laughs> it's easy. In this video, we're going to focus on something everyone loves to talk about. What's that? Performance. Let's do it! Speaking of performance, how do I know if a CNC machine is powerful but not too powerful enough? <clears throat> you know, people don't think about performance properly in my opinion. They're too feature focused. Does it have linear <laughs> slides? Does it have ball screws? They're just too focused on raw numbers like maximum feed rate or spindle horsepower. Now yeah, falling, like, does those things matter? Well, kind of, <laughs> kind of. But most of the story is actually different than those things. It's like the old days when you're buying a stereo and you're just going through all the stereo magazines looking at things like total harmonic distortion <laughs> and then you're just shocked to discover they don't really make that much difference in the sound like you thought they would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the secret to CNC power. <laughs> I like it. Alright. The only thing that should matter to us at this point is how <coughs> fast a particular CNC machine can make the products you need to make for your business. I mean, that's what we care about, and it has to fit in our budget, yeah. obviously, but we want that's the good. fastest one in our budget. So the first thing to look at is whether a given machine can make your products at all. If the machine isn't big enough to fit your product, it's a non-starter. Yeah. Um, if it isn't accurate enough <coughs> to make your product, it's a non-starter. Yeah. If it's not capable of cutting whatever material your products are going to be made of, it's a non-starter. So you got to rule those things out. But if all of those things are good, the machine can make pretty much anything that fits within those limits. And that's the cool thing about CNC. The difference between the machines is how fast can they make it. And that depends on two things. Thing number one is setup and takedown, right? How fast can you get the machine ready to make some products, and then how fast can you pull the products back off when it's done? All right, that's number one. Number two is cutting speed. How fast can a given machine remove all the material that has to be removed to finish your product? Okay, that's interesting, you go ahead. I'm gonna nail set up and take down right now because it's actually pretty easy. In this price range, what you want is a machine that has a T-slot table. If you get one of those, you're gonna have really the best ease of use and flexibility in terms of setup and takedown, end of story. Okay, that's an easy checkoff item. All right. Now, that just leaves how fast the machine can remove material. For CNC routers, the three big things determine the material removal rate. Thing number one is size. Size matters. Number two is rigidity. Yeah. Okay. And thing number three is spindle power. These things all need to be balanced. Yes. Right? Too much spindle power and not enough rigidity and really bad things are going to happen. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And, you know, the bigger the size, the more it compromises the rigidity. Size matters. Right. So what kind of size <laughs> matters? Okay. So, unless you get the fundamentals right and properly balanced, these other features are just not going to matter. So, we'll start with those fundamentals. Size matters and bigger is better. Bigger lets you tackle larger projects. Bigger lets you automate making more smaller products. 
right? Because you could set up <laughs> once for like 10 products, cut out all 10. Yeah. And it just makes it that much faster. But there are downsides of big. No, I know it's hard to believe. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> the thing is, rigidity <laughs> is harder to achieve in larger sizes. You have to make the machines with a lot more material. It weighs a lot more. Oh, okay. Uh, and if you don't, it just won't be as rigid. Another issue, shop floor space, right? I mean, how much room do you really have for a CNC machine? <laughs> All right. You know? If you do have a big CNC machine, are you really <laughs> set up to handle, you know, big sheets of four by eight plywood and sling them around like they're just nothing? I mean, Jamie, you're not a very large, <laughs> yes. if you don't mind my saying you're very petite. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I can rest them in a position, but it, that's definitely not the ease to with four by eights. Okay, so feeding lots of those sheets around and moving them around the shop, you probably wind up needing a forklift. What? Do you have a forklift? No. No. All right. Afford a forklift. <laughs> so you know the bigger machines are like four by eight foot or five by ten. Let's talk about that for a sec. What can a four by eight do that a four by four can't? Or better yet, two four by fours versus one four by eight. Yeah, you can cut more products with the bigger one, right? You can cut more products on the bigger one, and that's helpful. But. The bigger one probably can't cut uh, within the four by four size <clears throat> twice as fast as the little one. It's probably more like one and a half times as fast, unless you're talking about a really industrial one, right? <laughs> and well, I mean, even more industrial than that. I mean, wow. like a fifty thousand dollar machine or more. Wow. Those guys can go really fast, uh, but you know, you're, that's out, way out of your budget range. Most definitely. Sometimes, though, you just have to have a bigger machine. I mean, if I was making custom kitchen cabinets, trying to do that four foot by four foot at a time would be really painful. Yeah. You, you really probably need a bigger machine for that. Um, so ask yourself, what's big enough for your <laughs> business? Uh, I believe it's probably one of the four by four size machines. Okay. Now, after size, the next thing we want to worry about when we choose our CNC router is rigidity. That's going to affect the quality and the speed of our work. A rigid structure can handle more forces. In other words, a bigger, more powerful spindle, which will allow faster cutting with larger cutters. If the spindle force is too strong, the machine's frame is just going to bend. If it gets bad enough, that frame will start to vibrate, and that leads to all kinds of problems, including an inability to be accurate hold your tolerances, poor tool life, and a terrible finish on the cut surface. This is terrible. How can I judge that a machine is going to be rich enough? Well, in general, weight is roughly equal to rigidity, right? I mean, a stouter, heavier machine is going to be more rigid. Um, we've actually gone through and compared machine weight to spindle power on commercial CNC machines and if you do that, you'll see this kind of a plot. Now, there's a similar relationship between size and weight that you can plot. And so, uh, the bigger the machine, the more rigidity it needs. And you wanna, when you talk bigger, think about the volume of the work envelope. So whichever axis it is, the more of it you have, uh, the bigger the machine. Well. <laughs> You've seen that size matters. <laughs> uh, so, uh, more volume machines are going to reduce rigidity and you have to offset that by adding weight to the machine. Mm -hmm. Now, turns out our G-Wizard software has all of that built in and it can basically tell you exactly how much power a particular machine can use in, and still be rigid enough. Um, That's your software. We're, it, yeah, that's the CNC cookbook software, and that's what we'll use to evaluate the machines. Now, I'm going to show how to do that in this video, we'll show it in a different video, and we'll also be including uh, a link down below where you can see in the description how to get to that article, okay? Aside from weight, there are some other factors that determine rigidity. 
uh, the material, right? You yeah. can you can build a CNC router out of wood, right? But you know, pound for pound, weight for weight, that machine will not be uh, as rigid as one that's made out of metal. And you know, same thing with plastic. Uh, so you know, generally you're going to prefer to have a machine that's made out of metal. There's also shape. You know, they build uh, skyscrapers out of I-beams rather than out of solid blocks of steel because for similar strength, it creates much less weight. Okay, so you, you generally will want a machine that is, uh, ha and, you know, they all have some amount of plate construction, but, you know, really good extrusions also matter a lot. Okay, the last thing that matters is experience you know as as uh, these machines go through different generations they'll address any kind of weaknesses in rigidity and so on uh, a great example of that is shape oko they're on like their fourth generation design and each one has been more rigid than the last so you can put this all together in a spreadsheet for yourself uh, but we'll also put it together for you in our buyer's guide to cnc routers uh, and there's a link in the description below to that buyer's guide and it'll give you rigidity ratings mm -hmm. on all of the different machines. We talked about size, we talked about rigidity. Mm -hmm. The last one we need to talk about is the spindle itself. And that's the router, right? Well, that's good you bring that up because there's a couple different kinds of spindle. Routers are the most common, little trim routers they call them, on a machine in this price range. But they're also, well, a Dremel's even a lighter weight than a trim router. Uh, but there are some really lightweight machines that use a Dremel. I wouldn't want to use a Dremel uh, in a machine I was trying to use for my business because I feel like it's just not enough power. It's not like the same kind of, same kind of thing. Same style of yeah. thing, yeah. Okay. There are also, the next step up from a trim router is a spindle that's been made for CNC router use. And uh, they're generally more powerful. Uh, they have a wider speed range. You can control their speed. Uh, and so they're really slick. So I recommend choosing a router that uh, has the ability to be upgraded to one of these purpose-made spindles. Okay. okay. So that's everything we need to judge the fundamentals. Awesome. So which uh, CNC you are the weekend? Okay. I, I believe after we look at all of this stuff, uh, the right one for us is a, a Shape Oko Pro. And let me go down and, and just talk about why. Uh, first, it's very reliable and well supported. I mean, there are countless YouTube videos and articles. It's almost universally loved. There's very few horror stories. Uh, we've actually had a Shape Oko at CNC Cookbook for a couple of years now. Good specs. The specs look good. Uh, there's great uh, third-party support from people like Winston Moy. Uh, so I really think that's uh, a lot to recommend it. All right, what's like the downtime? Is there maintenance requirements for it? Like... Maintenance is required for any CNC router. It's just a question of how much. People talk about years of operation of their Shape Ocos without breaking anything on the machine. Uh, I've personally had a Shape Oco 3 here at CNC Cookbook for years and it's had no maintenance issues. Uh, maintaining a Shape Oco uh, just takes a little bit of common sense. In other words, uh, if you hear a noise or notice performance has fallen off, uh, you're going to need to diagnose and fix it and it's, it's really not that hard. And, some examples of the kind of thing you might need to do is you might need to tighten the belts. Now, you've done that on Shape Oko, so you know that's not hard at all. No, it wasn't hard at all. You know, there's lubrication needed on any kind of machine uh, to keep it running smoothly. You know, sometimes a screw may come loose through vibration and you need to just re-tighten it. Yeah. Uh, one of the most common things is just to change the brushes on the trim router motor. And again, it's not hard to do. They even give you extra brushes oh, cool. uh, with the shape of shape Elkos. So that's all easy stuff, and it doesn't come up all that often. How long do you think it'll last? 
Well, a short answer is forever. I mean, as long as you're doing that maintenance, you know, they've got the spare parts. They're very simple to work on. Uh, they arrive as a kit, so you're gonna know how to work on it because you will have built it, <laughs> right? Um, the long answer is until you outgrow the thing. And when you do need more capacity, one question you're gonna wanna ask yourself is, you know, do you want a bigger machine or do you want more shape Ocos? There are a lot of people out there that just wound up buying more shape Ocos, and that's serving them well too. I, I really think it has enough power to fill your initial market needs uh, without being too much, which is exactly what we're looking for. And, you know, we've talked about size, and I think a 4x4 four four is a good size for you. Don't you agree? Yeah, I'm not driving a forklift anytime soon, that's for sure. Yeah, I know, so. I know the feeling. Um, by the way, I talked to the CEO of uh, Carbide 3D, and out uh, of curiosity, I asked him how much power a Shape Oco can take. And he says it's rigid enough you can actually run it to the point where you stall a trim router. Um, that is a lot of rigidity when it's strong enough to do that without just slipping. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's also, you know, plenty rigid enough that you can upgrade to a dedicated 2.2 uh, .2 kilowatt spindle without a problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's rigid, it has room to grow. I read that uh, the ball screws are the best and that Shapey Yoko has belts. Does that matter? Worry about that. Um, I wouldn't worry. Uh, ball screws can ball screws can deliver better performance in some cases, but it's probably not worth it in, in a machine that's in this price range. At least I don't think so. I would I would choose to have that savings uh, rather than spend uh, the extra. A lot of people don't like the belts because they got talked into the idea that they're high maintenance, but they're really not. Um, you're gonna need to maintain your ball screws just as much. You gotta lubricate them, and if they get too much sawdust, they get clogged and jammed, and so that's maintenance too. Okay, okay the last thing about the Shape Oco Pro is it's very reasonably priced. Uh, their big XXL size is available for about $2,800 as we're filming this. That's your thing, Yeah, and uh, they'll do financing on top of that, uh, plus, they're very complete. Uh, you have to watch out uh, for brands that kind of nickel and dime you with all sorts of things that you're going to need even just to get started, but they're sold as extra cost options. For example, software. Uh, the Shape Ocos come with Carbide Create. It's, it's pretty good software. You've played with it a little bit. Uh, and it's included for free, and you're going to be able to get started with that. Uh, they give you some cutters. They give you a dust boot, they give you a tool pro, uh, and software to automate tool changes. Um, you know, Shape Oco Pro includes a bit setter. Uh, they have wire management. You know, a lot of these machines just leave the wires all dragging around, and you're not going to be able to run very long before they pull their wires out and tear themselves up. Pull mine out. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all, it's all managed on the Shape Oco Pro. Uh, you know, you're work holding. We've already said we want a machine that's got a a table with T-Tracks and sacrificial MDF, you know, there's one of the popular brands out there that doesn't come with any base or table at all. So you're going to have to figure out how to build something for that before you can do anything. <laughs> um, Shape Oco even includes some little injection molded toe clamps uh, that work with the T-slots. Uh, so you got pretty much everything you need. Uh, and so honestly, uh, to me, if you want the 4x4 form factor, it's hard to find a better value. Well, when can we get a Shape Oco? Hey, I got good news for you, Jamie. Carbide 3D has given us a Shape Oco Pro. <laughs> right? Because they were so excited. I'm uh, excited. <laughs> and so, it, you know, our next video, we're going to show what it's like uh, to assemble the machine. What do you think? Okay, you're I'm stoked. Very excited. Hey, you know what? I'm stoked too. Yeah. Okay, folks, you now have a deep understanding of how to go about choosing the right CNC machine for your needs. Um, you know, we can help with a lot of your homework and to help you reach the right conclusion uh, with our CNC buyer's guide. And I've got a link to it below, as I've said. 
Uh, we've also got a CNC router survey. Uh, we actually just started it in conjunction with this video. And when it completes, I will be updating the CNC buyer's guide uh, to give all that information that comes in from the survey. So you'll see not just raw factory specs, <laughs> but also what your peers think about uh, each one of these machines. As I said, our next video is going to be all about building the Shape Up Pro. Thanks very much. Woo.